This is the definition of a niche product launched by an indie that is innovative. Um, it basically, it's going after REITs that are what they call triple net lease. In other words, these are companies that cover a lot of the costs besides the rent, maintenance, taxes, and insurance. That way, the REIT keeps a more of the bottom line, doesn't have to deal with those things. That's the general uh, holding uh, the strategy here. 31 million, pretty good for new, 60 bips, a little higher than the average, but you know, average for an uh, industry type niche product. Let's look at the holdings. Uh, the top holding is store. This, was, this is uh, it leases to supermarkets, health clubs, uh, retail distribution facilities. You can see some other ones on here, a lot of REITs, very concentrated. Let's look at the holdings though versus VNQ. This is the big boy uh, in the category, and you can see here the big difference is here, obviously much smaller. Right, a little more yield here, here, but also very more concentrated. 24 versus 185, and look at the average size of the stock in there. Much smaller, right? So here you're going to get a little more zip, a little more pure play towards this category, and it's only 7% overlap. So this is again uh, one of these uh, strategies, a little out of the left, the center. All right, great overview. Still with me is Alexi Panayotakopoulos of Fundamental Income. Alexi, explain the distinction here of net lease versus gross lease, and therefore the growth prospects of net lease investments. Sure. So the behavioral bias ten, tends to lean towards traditional food groups like you know malls, multifamily, office, and, and there the landlord is responsible for everything that's passed through the rent to the tenant. In net leases, it's a single standing free asset where you're really looking to generate consolidated cash flows that are more sustainable. So the tenant pays property taxes, insurance, as well as maintains the property. And because of that, the yield is a little bit higher, like we said, a little bit more sustainable, but there's also a growth opportunity because you don't have the drag of re-tenanting em empty spaces. Ah, okay. So um, the vacancy rate is much lower as a result. Yeah, generally, I mean, you look at you know realty income, national retail have maintained 96 plus percent vacancy or occupancy rates mm -hmm. through the downturns and multiple market cycles. And part of that is because you have leases that have 11 and a half year average term. And so you don't have leases rolling at the bottom of market cycles. And these are much more imperative to revenue of a company underlying. Got it. Now talk about these locked in leases. Uh, my colleague Morgan Barna did a report on this looking at you lock in for about 10 or 11 years, right? Now we talk about REITs and uh, they're used for yield. If rates rise, is this like holding a bond with a high duration? Could you get hit a little harder? You know, it, there is interest rate sensitivity, but you're not investing in a bond. You're investing in the equity of a company, and these are active companies that are out there growing consistently. Last year alone, the, the REITs added 17 billion in assets, and you know, they're really looking to offset that sensitivity with new leases, and as interest rates move, so do cap rates. So they're still dynamic. They're constantly shedding assets, adding assets, and, and you do get the growth factor, like an equity that you wouldn't get in a bond. Alexi, final question to you. You and your co-founder came from a Warren Buffett-owned REIT, which is Store Capital, which, by the way, is the biggest holding in NetL, as Eric just showed us. How did that shift come about? How did that transition come about? Yeah, you know, so my partner was the head of credit and capital markets for, for Store Capital alongside Chris Volk, and, you know, they did great things there, and Warren took a look at it, and one of his partners, Ted Wexler, took a look, and in mid-2017, they decided to buy just under 10% of the company, but that really goes to show you kind of the value in this sector it's cash, it's sustainable, it's really investing in America and it's all around us, you know, grocery stores, et cetera.